um, I have a thought to maybe go over some fundamentals of Zumba without music. Cool. So I don't have a lot of time to do this normally during a class, but let's do it. Why not? Maybe somebody who hasn't done Zumba before, maybe this will make it make a little more sense and give you some ideas of that it's not just voodoo that we're doing here. Um, you don't have to actually have like super mega skills to participate in Zumba um, to dance. It's more important that you just move around, but if you do kind of want to know some of the dance steps, you know what? Let's go over them right now. So Zumba is based on four basic steps or the core of what Zumba is. And then Zumba is meant to be based in Latin dance, but definitely include all sorts of world influences. Um, and that's why I love it because you learn get to be exposed to so many different kinds of music and different kinds of dancing. Um, and we, we rarely take time to really acknowledge where it comes from. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm like historically versed in any of this. I, I want to learn more about it and I should. Um, so should you. But anyway, if you want to do a salsa, I want to show you just my white girl salsa moves um, that are watered down to the nth degree, but it'll get you doing the basic movement and then once you're in a Zumba class and you see the instructor doing one of these things, you'll get, you'll be able to start doing that. And as you get more comfortable doing that basic watered down version, then you can add flavor and get into it and actually burn more calories and enjoy it even more. So salsa is one of my favorite steps, although I have very few salsa songs. <laughs> I can't find songs that I love that are salsa to do, and I and that since I'm the DJ, I have to love the song. But I do love the steps. So let me point this down a little bit more so you can see my feet. So a basic side-to-side -side salsa is just tapping out, tapping in. All right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm having uh, lots of trouble here. That might have frozen for a second. All right, salsa. our hips uh, in daily life. We might be sitting to do our jobs. We might be just sort of alienated from that. We don't walk around like Shakira with our hips not lying. Um, our, our hip, my hips, I was like, when I first started doing I was like, my, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Guess what? Over time, you train your muscles. You, you, you make a mental connection to your muscles and it's just motor memory and you build on the foundation until you can do something. And that's why I find Zumba challenging, but just, I love it. There's always something new to learn, something more to add. So side to side, what you actually want to do is start from your hip. So bump out, bump out. So it's not really your leg going out as much as your hip going out and your leg following. See what I'm saying? And I don't even do this like a master at all, but I'm just sharing the tips that I've learned as I've gone because it's so much fun. So that's the basic side to side salsa. There's also just a front tap salsa. So that's just, you might have seen this and that's, again, think about making it come from the hips and now you're working those abs. So same thing with the side to side salsa having it come from the core and the abs, you're getting much more of a workout, right? So front top salsa, again, put your hip into it and you're getting a lot different movement than if you're just tapping your feet. So don't, don't do anything that will strain yourself, but challenge yourself to work those muscles. It takes some 
mental effort and mind-body connection. All right, so that's the front tap. Um, so then there's also the front to back salsa. So you see this a lot where you do a front, meet them together in the middle, and then the other leg goes back and then back to the middle. Front to the middle, back to the middle, front to the middle, back to the middle. And again, once you get your legs used to it, now focus on your core. Bring that core into it, front and back, front and back. And then you switch lead foot and you do left first and then right back and then left first. And then a lot of flavor you might see is you can add arm movements. You can add a look back. I haven't mastered the look back yet, but it's on my, it's on my bucket list. Actually, maybe I just did. I don't know. Maybe I just mastered it. Watch out for that move in a class coming near you. So it's like, what? You're looking back. You're coming back. You're going forward. Yeah, looking back. Love it. Uh, so another variation is the rock back step. So um, that's where you kind of cross in the back. And I usually start showing people it with my arm swinging back because it's kind of natural for your body to do that. But when you get really good with this, that's when you can really be use some flavor with your back step. So you can add arms, which is beautiful and graceful. I have just done this. This is kind of like a superstar, superstar, superstar. <laughs> and then there's even one salsa that Alice and Sona do that you might know in your classes where they do the rock step back, rock step back, and then they actually do a turn and then come back into the rock step. And that is a cool move. Once you get that sequence, it's pretty awesome. All right, another variation of salsa is the crossover. So, um, looks more complicated than it is, but it's just, again, a matter of motor memory. So, instead of just coming back to center, and being parallel with your other foot, you're going out and then you're putting it in front of your other foot and then just kind of doing that continuously. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that is, once you master that, it's a very, very cool travel that they do with salsa. Yes. And then of course with salsa there's the the two step uh, with arms. I'm not thinking of what that's exactly called right now, but you, you notice that a lot with salsa. Um and I'm trying to think of what else I do. And then there's lots of obviously variations. I encourage people to watch like professional salsa dancing, professional bachata, prof professional um, uh, cumbia. It is amazing. Um, Latin dance is so expressive and so much use of the core and hips um, and so beautiful. And I have to say we have some amazing instructors, Mariela, um, all my peeps add a different flavor to it, but there's some really authentic, authentic dancers, some great, beautiful dancers that have background in ballet and all sorts of things. I personally have no dance background. That's why you can relate to me, hopefully, because I, I don't dance, but yet I dance. All right, let's go on to, speaking of cumbia, that's probably, probably my favorite because I, I wouldn't have guessed it's my favorite, but I probably have the most cumbia songs out of any songs just because, I don't know, they're, they're fun. The cumbia step that is the very, very basic step 
is just a back and a forth. One and two and one and two and one and two in. And then you might see this step where you're just kind of going in place or traveling. And the same thing with this side step, you can do this in place or you can obviously travel that's a little more advanced. So you often see it progress where you start at the beginning of the song with just the regular cumbia and then you're building up to going up, uh, traveling with it or traveling side to side, which is fun. So that looks more like going up and back and every time you're going over, you're, you're one foot's going over. Um, one thing I want to mention about that that I have learned in terms of injury prevention is that you don't want to use too much, like a, at first I learned that the female, or the, the yeah, the, the gender female version of cumbia, they often use like the front of a foot and that men in cumbia dance usually use the heel. And what Zumba actually wants you to do is use your whole foot so that you don't overwork any particular muscle. It's better to have the weight, your weight evenly distributed as you are dancing. So I usually try to use my whole foot, but you may see variations of instructors doing different things, and that is why, because there's no wrong way to do it. There's just different ways to do it. Um, the other part of cumbia that I love is the um, the the lazy lazy leg step. It's like you're holding a candle, so you have to keep your your uh, palm parallel to the ground, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, horizontal. Yeah, horizontal. <laughs> and then you can see my feet. One foot is pointing towards the direction you want to come. It's called squeaky leg. I don't know what I just called it a minute ago, but it's called squeaky leg. Um, and you kind of are dragging that foot behind you. Hence the sleepy leg. Get it? So there's that. And then there's variations of that. Obviously, you can go slow, slow, quick, quick, quick. You can go up and down and up and down um, and then there's the machete move which i love um, and it's based on cutting down corn sugar cane whatever cutting down the crop bringing it up and then throwing it behind and it's actually a dance move so I just love when you can picture what a dance move actually is supposed to be or mean. For me, that helps me envision it while I'm doing it and gives it more of a context. So again, hopefully some of these tips are going to give you some context. The cool thing about machete is that you can do a variation where you go around. After you do one, you can switch sides. You can do it very shallowly in terms of hardly moving, but once you get into it, if you want to get more of a fitness variation from it, you can do a squat, come up and back and move your entire body instead of, but you can always you can keep it here if this is where you're at. But if you want to bring it, squat, and you really cut, you bring it back and you throw it over. I love, so I said I love cumbias. Um, cumbias often have like a, sometimes like this type of movement, two, uh, one and two, or a forward tap. Um, and there's probably some things I'm missing about that. Uh, a lot of times uh, after the sleepy leg, there's also like a turn we do. Um, there's also like an in place move where your forward uh, leg is, one of your legs is forward, the other one's a little back, and your hips are moving up and down, like a figure eight almost. And then you can switch and do 
that, but that's what that move is. Yeah. Um, what else? So that's my, my second favorite. There's obviously the other step that is really awesome or set of steps is the reggaeton, which is often the single, single, double. It's kind of a hip hop beat. Um, and it's one of my favorites because you can really get down with it. Um, there's variations of the single, single, double. And of course it can be double, double, double. And it can even be single, single, single. Um, but it's definitely got more of that urban hip hop flavor to it. Um, so those are some of my favorite moves. Um, and what other tips do I want to give people? Um, I could give you a tip about Bollywood, um, the hips, because this takes a lot of mind uh, body connection. And it took a long time for me to even learn this, discover it, whatever, and I'm still learning and I'm still working with muscles. But my friend, who was an instructor at the Y, Jen Nickerson, taught me this, and she probably learned it from other people. But let's say you're gonna take some groceries in and you're holding them in your arms, and us women do this all the time, we need to shut a door. So we stick our hip out to shut the door. We don't use our arms. That's the isolation that you're looking for in a lot of the hip movements of Bollywood and other dance steps. And it doesn't come all that naturally to people when your hips don't lie. But once you kind of make that connection, it's a little bit, I gotta say, it's a little addictive because you feel like you can master those types of songs. Whereas before when you watch someone do it, you're like, how, what are you doing? I don't even understand. That was me learning this. So I have a few songs where um, we work hips in circles, we go back and forth. These are all really, really good for the spine, but if you're, you know, your spine needs to be warm to do those things and you don't want to stress anything. But over time, if you keep doing things that help your spine be flexible, believe me, as you're aging, that will really, really help with back problems um, and all sorts of things. And on a completely side note, I totally, totally encourage people to explore some type of yoga with their dance. Um, and I was myself very, very resistant to yoga back in the day because it honestly hurt me to do it. I wasn't flexible, I wasn't getting it. I thought it was painful and I knew I wasn't looking like the people who were doing the yoga. So I thought I just didn't belong. It's further from the truth. Everyone can benefit from yoga. It's probably one of the most important things you can do. Who knows, maybe I'll become a yogi someday. <laughs> it's not out of the question. Um, but what I love about yoga, it has helped me stay dancing because I've been able to increase my flexibility and learn how to stretch. And, and in learning how to stretch, I've also learned how to move my body in dancing because again it establishes that mindfulness from your brain to your muscles which is a part of any athletic thing that you're doing but in particular dance um, what I love about dance is you can move around and, and not even really have to think about it but when you actually do add that mental process to it you kind of go to another level and that's really wellness and development. So that's a complete side note. I don't even know how I got on that, but oh, connecting, connecting muscle and mind. Um, one of my favorite types of yoga, if people aren't familiar with yoga, is, and I didn't know this, there's something called restorative yoga. It requires you to do almost nothing except lay and stretch. 
um, in passive ways that are s supposed to be super comfortable and allows you to connect into your muscles. And it honestly, I would say it felt, it feels like the equivalent of massage for me, um, which is, um, you know, so the, the way, the, how much restoration happens within your body um, for restorative is it, it just relaxes you. It teaches you how to relax. And if you can't relax your muscles, you can't actually work your muscles. Do you see how that might connect? I feel like I'm giving a lecture right now. This is so impromptu. I love it. I love it. What else? Um, so back to the hips and that, that movement, boom, boom. So anytime you see that movement, maybe you even want to do this cue yourself. Um, and people are going to be like, what are you doing? You just be like, Hey, I'm holding my groceries. Boom. <laughs> and, uh, that's that one. So you'll see different uh, variations on this, the move, but, um, you can go, it's kind of like a big and a little, a big and a little, that's a, a pretty common Bollywood move. And the way you'll see people's feet going is what's confusing because um, you'll see their feet doing something. You'll almost think, hey, I need to move my foot like that. But your mind's tricking you. It's not about the foot movement. It's about the hip movement. Think about all of your movements in Zumba coming from the core and going out word. I mean, I'm going to say that again because I don't think people realize how different of an experience you will have with Zumba or any other dance or fitness once you start connecting that the movement comes from the core and not out here. Sometimes I even start class by saying, hey, just like move your arms like this. And, uh, you know, and that's one way to do it. And you're, you're definitely working certain muscles, but now try to have that movement come from your core. Now I'm working back muscles. Now I'm working core muscles. Um, it's, it's just completely different. And again, with the salsa going out with your hip, your leg is just following you. Your arms are just following you. That's revolutionary. At least for me it was. Somebody who didn't know about dance. So if you take away one tip from this gigantic rant, it's that your moves should come from your core. Your limbs will be following your core. And connecting that mind and body is really important. So... Um, there's a variation where we do a, a hip, a hip, and then we may do a three, two, one. And again, it's the same grocery thing. Boom, 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 boom. So that's another tip. Another tip about arm movements um, for Latin dance. You can think of those beautiful skirts that the women would wear and they would have to hold them. So you can think of flamenco dancers with their beautiful um, garb and dresses and it's just amazing, right? Well, their arm movements kind of follow along with those and they're so graceful. So if you think of when you're doing a turn that you might still have that skirt that you have to get out of the way, that's your that's actually your arm movement. Isn't that cool? When you think about it that way? Yeah. Um, what else do I want to say? I uh, Thanks for hanging in there if you've actually listened to any of this. Uh, I think I'm going to wind up. Um, maybe I'll do just a, a, some stretching, actually. Since I'm talking about yoga and how important that mind-body connection is, maybe I can demonstrate that. So, um, so the importance of breath too. If you're holding your breath while you're dancing, 
you're not oxygenating properly, you're going to get injured. And it, it's, it, it, you have to almost train yourself to do it, um, you know, if you're not used to it. So, but breath is um, the basis of everything. So let's take a deep breath. <laughs> I don't have enough room here. Sorry. And breathe out. Breathe in. And out. Unfortunately, I'm breathing in lots of pollen. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then pay attention to the shoulders. We, we hold a lot of tension in the shoulders. And how symbolic is that? Like the world is on our back, you know, lean on me, our shoulders. We, we literally carry tension in our shoulders also because we're looking at screens all day long. We have that forward head posture. We really need to open up the chest. So if you could just take a stretch and make sure to stretch that. Anytime you've been sitting or looking at a computer, it's good to get up and just do this. Opening up that chest. And also the shoulders are often up here by our ears. We increasingly get closer to our ears as we're tense. And so honestly, the best thing you can do is kind of purposely put them up and then really exaggerate down as you exhale. It's one of my favorites. The other thing I find has nothing to do with dance, but just realize how much tension you might have in your face. Kind of learned this from Ayana, my friend Ayana Parent. Shout out! Um, the jaw. If you really concentrate on letting some tension from your jaw go, it's pretty amazing and you blow out that stress. Relax your eyes, relax your forehead, relax the shoulders. You just do kind of a body scan and you do it as slow as you need to. And not only are the shoulders going down, but they're also going back. And we're trying to stack our spine from head to toe so that there's not an uneven load anywhere. That's the ideal um, posture, the starting posture that you want to always kind of come back to. When we exaggerate it in one way, if you think about it, it only makes sense that we should actually stretch the opposite way. So that made a lot of sense to me too. Um, I also had um, issues where I had uh, sometimes from sitting your pelvis gets tilted in a way that is um, it's called a cross syndrome and so certain muscles get shortened certain muscles are lengthened and so in order to balance that out you need to kind of add some strength to the muscles that are that have been stretched out and you need to be able to stretch the ones that have become shortened. So again, let's take some deep breaths. And then I would say for the leg stretching, one of the things that helped me the most in dance and in yoga and in life, because right now I've had less back pain, I've had less, um, I've had uh, what do you call it, the plantar fasciitis. I've had lots of issues with my legs because I wasn't um, able to stretch the right muscles um, to get the benefit of the stretch. It was very painful. So one of, the, one of my favorite tips is to get a really small squishy ball. And I know people say sit on a tennis ball, sit on a softball. Those things are hard. They hurt 
for me, I couldn't do it. I, so I wouldn't do it. Um, for me, I need to des desensitize myself. So I got something soft. I was given something by a myofascial release therapist that's very soft that I was able to sit on or apply pressure to the fascia. So it's not actually the muscles sometimes that are tight. Sometimes the fascia that surround all of our tissues and muscles don't allow for muscles to stretch because they are not hydrated. They're not working properly like they should with being able to, they should be hydrated and sliding over the muscles and allowing for stretching and for whatever reason they are not. So when you get a restriction in the fascia, that can be um, what causes then imbalances and in injury. So you don't go at fascia with really hard core brute. You're not trying to break it up harshly. You're trying to allow it to release. You're working with it to release. And as it releases gently, then you're able to notice more uh, ability to stretch properly. Uh, not so much properly, but more effectively, I would say. And um, so one of the things I learned, this is one of my favorite stretches, um, is just to go like this and we do it after every class. And you're just pointing your toe towards the sky. And if this is all you can do, this is all you can do. Because you're better off stretching correctly with good form at less of a range of motion than forcing a range of motion that will that makes you compensate in a way that you're not really stretching what you need to stretch anyway. So our mind that says, I'm not going low enough, or I'm not reaching that, um, that needs to stop because it's more important, again, to stretch incrementally in the right way. Um, any fitness person will tell you it's better to do one rep correctly than do a hundred incorrectly. It's just more effective. Um, they'd rather see you focus on the one time doing it right. So again, let's go back to that. Now, hinging at the hips. This is something we don't, I didn't realize. When I would um, lean over to get something, I would start with my shoulders and go over to lean. I gotta stop that. The shoulders need, I'm gonna try to keep them back. Okay, so I'm bending over, but the shoulders are staying back. My core, I'm trying to keep my spine in alignment, and I'm hinging at the hip. Hinging at the hip is a huge concept to keep in mind for having a healthy back, uh, healthy hip, uh, and all of that. Hin hinging at the hip is something that sounds easy, but when you're not paying attention, when you're coming from a sit to stand, I know Keith has talked about this in his videos as well. Um, using the correct muscles to sit and stand um, are just as important um, because it's, it, it's how we work out during the rest of our day. We don't think we're working out, but when we're sitting to standing, that's working out. So let's do it right um, so that when we go to dance, we already have that skill and we're preventing you know, the chronic deterioration of the function and the muscles that, that um, we could be preserving and training correctly. So again, back to this, hinging at the hip means I might not be able to go as far down as I used to when I would lean with my shoulders around my back and do that incorrectly. Um, so I make a point to use the mirror for feedback and go down, hinging the hip as much as I can. I will still reach down, but it's more important to me to keep the flat back and the hip hinge than to go further down because I'm getting the same benefit because I'm not trying to, what I'm actually needing to stretch out are some of those muscles in the gluteus maximus, you know what I'm saying? The gluteus uh, muscles uh, from sitting, from driving, from, um, you know, that kind of thing, from just whatever, um, they can get really tight. Um, and when you're not realizing that you need 
to stretch those, you can imagine if those get um, knotted, how that affects everything else down the chain. So my plantar fasciitis went away when I actually addressed like stretches in the gluteal area and building um, strength. The other move that you can do to build strength, you can use bands, but you need to do like the kickback to build that muscle. It's not, that's not a motion we do very often. So, and that takes a lot of mind, it takes mind concentration to do that. And once you get good at that, you can add bands. It's pretty cool. So you can work on that. But again, the hip hinge, super important, keeping that back, back flat. So we did that side, let's do this side as well. Keeping the back as flat as possible. See, I even have to look at for correction in the camera. Keep my shoulders back. Nice. Um, if anyone needs uh, something to lean on, we all need somebody to lean on. You can do that, but this is a great quad stretch. Um, I noticed that when I'm cold, I can hardly do the stretch, but when I'm warm, I can really stretch this. And this particular stretch is also really good for just balance. So it's good for your opposing um, leg ankle strength because you're having to balance. And if you can't balance, it's perfectly fine to get some help. Some days I just go for the wall. I know it's not going to happen right now. I'm using this poor shrub. <laughs> The other thing about balance that I learned in yoga, which I think is so valuable and a life lesson, is that you pick a spot on the floor or on the wall in front of you and you focus on it. And when you do that, that allows for balance. It's a really good concept in general in life too, isn't it? This is totally outside of my, I'm really outside my lane today, but I'm just going to go there because I'm feeling it. With the coronavirus, with all the socio-political stuff going on, it's hard to know where to focus. And when I think about that stretch, it almost, it chokes me up because what if we all found that spot that we wanted to focus on and we focused on it the best we could and we it allowed us to do what we needed to do and it, it allowed for us to balance ourselves. How important is that? It's very, 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 very important. Self-care is very, very, very important. Socialization is very, very important. We don't have that right now. It's the best I can do. Let's take a few more breaths. I am sending peace, love, and light to you. I am hoping that people can show up on Tuesdays at 4.30 or Fridays at 4 on the courts because I don't know that I'll be able to stream anymore uh, because there's just not the ability to do it there and obviously I can't figure out the music here um, and I'm not able to go indoors yet. So we're it's all evolving but I hope that people can join me. It's It was really fun yesterday. Three people came yesterday um, and we got to dance together, socially distanced, very safely outside with plenty of fresh air and shade so i hope to see you thank you for if you got through this whole thing thank you for listening and um like i said peace love and light to you um keep that find that focus